And welcome back to Varsity Sports. Now we switch our focus to North Dakota, and uh, we're going to start in baseball. Class A, Jason, uh, Minot is a team that's been at the top of your rankings from the get-go, but Bismarck might be the hottest team right now in North Dakota. The Demons play some really good baseball. Yeah, Demons right now 3-2 and two in their region. Doesn't sound that overpowering, mm -hmm. uh, but they're coming back strong. They're getting some players back that have been injured throughout the year. Nathan mm -hmm. Ding has been pitching great for them, so when he's on the mound, it's almost been a sure win for this team so far. Uh, but talk about Quinn Irie, their catcher, their All-State catcher, who hasn't been here most of the year. He's been easing his way back into the lineup as a DH, but in the last two games now, he's three for four from the plate and he's walked a number of times. I think he's going to supply us some much needed punch. So I see Bismarck moving up. I only have them at number four right now because Dickinson's been playing so well. West Fargo on the east side of the state has been playing very well. Uh, and Minot, you know, despite their two losses, is still one of the best teams in North Dakota. So we'll see later this week uh, just how much improved this Bismarck team is and if they contend, can contend for one of the top teams in the state. All right, how about Class B? New number one in Hazen, and the reason they're at the top is because they beat the team that used to be at number one. Yeah. They did it twice. Yeah, their only loss this season was to Shiloh Christian earlier in the year, and Shiloh had a 9-0 record coming into the week. Well, Shiloh lost their last two games now to Hazen, an up-and-coming team. Uh, what makes Hazen so good is their pitching. They've done a great job of getting better and stronger at their pitching. Early in the season, had some cold games, had some cold arms, and that's probably why they lost that one game. But right now, a lot of people point to Hazen as the team to beat. So back-to-back -back wins over an undefeated team is an impressive thing. I also want to touch on Thompson. This is a team uh, that's 3-1. and one. They're coming off to a great start. They had a no-hitter last week, and they've got a couple players that are playing well. Uh, when people talk about the top five teams in Class B, not a lot of people talking about Thompson. But I think the Tommies could be there at the end once this season uh, uh, gets going and deep into the season we could find them right at the top bringing the fa the bringing the fences short the baselines a little we'll talk a little softball now okay. and, and uh, west fargo everybody obviously well aware and we've talked at length about it already here over the past couple of weeks on this show about just how good the packers are and they, they just keep on rolling yeah uh my not ryan the team that's challenged them the last couple of years in the state title game Stumbled a bit early, but maybe getting back on track now. Yeah, had a loss early on to Bismarck and then had another loss to West Fargo. No shame in that, but the surprise was their star pitcher, Hannah Stewart, mm -hmm. had a couple of rough outings. She came back in a big way, only gave up four hits to one of the most powerful hitting teams in the state in century, and then they capped it off with a no-hitter later in that doubleheader by Brienne Backus. So they gave up four hits to one of the most powerful offensive hitting teams in the century over two games. That almost put them back in the top two, but Dickinson has been playing so well at 7-0, got another great performance out of their stud pitcher, Haley Butterfield, and then we talked about West Fargo. They just keep rolling. I think they've had three games in a row now. They've scored more than 20 runs. Uh, shouldn't even be in the same league as some of these teams. Took out Fargo North took out Grand Forks Central, um, a 21 to nothing win over Fargo North. So that's a team that's rolling, and I'm looking forward to see how they do. They've got a couple big games coming up, which we'll talk about in just a minute here. Yeah, and speaking of those big games, might as well get into it. Okay. What's coming up uh, for these teams uh, as far as challenges? Are there any for a team like West Fargo? Well, West Fargo gets to go play in North St. Paul, and this is a place where they get to see some more competition. And this will be a good test for them. It's a team that's won 16 straight championships folks they mm -hmm. have to go looking elsewhere for some good competition to keep their team sharp but you also look at Dickinson and Bismarck playing uh, Bismarck's a team that's beaten Minot Ryan early th this year Dickinson's still undefeated and then you got Valley Cent Valley City and Century two teams still in that top five range mm -hmm. but uh, just not at the same quality as those top three teams on the baseball diamond Bismarck we talked about him one of the hottest teams Minot who's stumbled a bit you know, a couple of early losses but you still think has the talent to be the number one team on the baseball side. Those two are going to get together here yeah, in the very near future. They play Friday. That's going to tell us a lot about who's the best in the West. All right. The Howard Wood Relays coming up in just over a week. Alex Heiner is going to join us next to talk about how some of the area's top athletes are preparing for that huge event. Varsity Sports Now, presented by Shields. 